Good morning, good morning. God bless you. Good morning on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Amen. It truly is a beautiful day. I am grateful for this day. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. Thanking God for this privilege. Good morning, Julia. How are you? How are you doing today, sister? I pray that all is well. Amen. I pray that you guys are still on fire for God. Amen. For truly, this is not the time to give in or give out. Good morning, Susan. God bless you. God bless you. It's good to see you. Amen. Truly, God is worthy of all praise. And I thank God for this day that he has given us. Amen. Because you know what? Guess what? We didn't have to be alive. You know, I look around the world and every time you turn on the uh, television, you know, you hear more people dying, more people losing their lives. You know, people whose families have been impacted by COVID-19 and for other things, you know, because let's keep in mind, murder rate is still up in some places, um, car accidents and, and everything else that's going on. There's so much for us all to be concerned about. There's so much for us to be worried about or, or bothered with. And, and then, you know, on top of that, you know, I look at the many businesses, the countless businesses that are closing and people's livelihoods that are being impacted. You know, it started me thinking, you know, <clears throat> I was thinking about this, you know, as many of you know, you know, my church has grown. Um, and, you know, and I thank God for that, you know, and that we were, we were actually looking um, for a new location. You know, we were actually looking for a new location to expand, you know, and not not so much to expand because of, um, you know, just expanding sake, but because we needed the room. We needed the room uh, for the people and for the ministries that were growing in our church. Right. But, you know, a as we were going around, one of the things that one of the things that I do is that honestly, you know, I trust God just like the way he brought me to the place where we are right now. I trust God and I said, Lord, you know, you lead me. Where do you want me to go? Where do you want us to go? God, where do you want us to, to set our roots even for a season? Where do you want us to be? And, you know, we saw a lot of places, right? We saw a lot of places and, <clears throat> and when we saw them, you know, the places were nice. They, they had the room for us. There were things that we could do. We could actually afford it. Um, but then, you know, there was like a hesitancy in my spirit. Just wait, you know, wait. And, and you know, and I waited, you know. And a lot of people was like, oh, you guys need to get a new church. Oh, my God, you guys need to, you know, you guys do really well with, you know, utilizing the place you have, but you need the room. You know, we had uh, officials, governmental officials that were helping us because of the amount of work that we do in the community and, and what we do to help others and how God has blessed us to have impact, you know, um, and, and we kept turning down stuff, right? And, you know, <clears throat> when I look now as what's going on in the world, I'm looking here and I'm like, God, no wonder you kept telling me to wait, you know, to wait. Because, of course, our budget would have been a whole lot higher. Um, and, uh, you know, it would have been a lot more. We would have had more staff. So we would have more people that we supply for. Because even now, uh, the people that uh, work for us, um, we pay them, you know, because... You know, and, and honestly, this may be something that some of y'all may not do, but even if we're not having service, we pay them. And the reason why we pay them is because they depend on us. And honestly, the word of God says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? So if I was in a situation where it was not my fault, it's not my fault why I can't work, what would I want my job to do, right? Pay me. You know, and maybe some people may say, well, pastor, you know, I don't know about that. Okay, well, that's your choice. But for me, 
you know, I, I believe in really taking care of those who have taken care of us. I believe in, you know, supporting those who have supported us. I believe in helping those who has helped us. Because the word of God says that in the same measure that you give, it shall be given back to you. So they have given unto us their talents and their time and their efforts and their expertisms. Um, they've given to us um, their, our, their gifts. They've given to us so much stuff. So I believe that we as a body of Christ should also take care of them. And so I've been praying, Lord, you know, just maintain us so that we can not skip a beat. And we are great. I'm so grateful to God for how he has kept me and kept us and sustained us during all of these seasons and climatic changes and um, what's going on in the world and everything. God has been so good, right? And so with that being said, I want to encourage you to make sure that you are giving God your best. Make sure that you're giving God your best. Make sure that the word of God says, do everything as unto the Lord. So we don't serve people in the sense of, because we want people to approve of us, or we want people to be glad of us, right? We're not um, serving for constituencies. We're not serving for your vote, for your votes. We're not serving for that. We're serving because we have to do what we do as unto the Lord. And so today I have a message, God's willing, that, that I want to deliver unto you. Um, and I pray that you would hear it today. It's going to be at the church. Um, and so you'll catch it online. But, but I, I really want to um, share this message with you because I think too many of us have have fallen back too many of us have fallen back too many of us have have forgotten who we are you know and we've gotten caught up in the time and in the 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 season we've gotten caught up in the um things of this world the things of this life and the things of this life everything that you go through all the challenges that you face they are all temporal my friends they are all temporal you know, um, even Paul had to come to the place that he says, you know, whether we live or die, we're the Lord's. You know, we got to we got to have that that mindset like the three Hebrew children that says, you know, our God is able to deliver us. But if he does not, we shall not bow down. We're not going to bow down because we only bow our knees to one creator. Right. And so because of that, we have to keep chugging along. Right. We got to keep doing the things that glorify our father that glorifies our father we got to do the things that honor him we got to do the things that 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 lifts up his name and and in the midst of our generation we got to still remind people that he's on the throne right it doesn't mean we're not going to get sick it doesn't mean we're not going to experience you know some weaknesses or troubles in our lives or you know the word of god says and christ himself says in this life you're going to have trouble right he says you're going to have trouble he said but be of good cheer he said because i've already overcome the world right and so it doesn't matter what you're going through i know you've been going through a lot right i know you've been going through a lot i know that some of you are at, the, at your wits end to what's, what you're going to do and how you're going to make it through. I know, I know. A lot of people are concerned. They're concerned about their jobs. They're concerned about their livelihoods. They're concerned about their families and friends. You know, you know these days you have uh, people, you know, I minister a lot to people and, and you know, you have people that will call you and say, Pastor, I'm in the hospital, right? And guess what? At my best efforts, even going to the hospital, they said, no, you can't come in. You can't come in. Why? Because of the fact of that there are rules that they have, right? But, but their rules does not supersede the power of our prayer. Do you understand me, people of God? What's going on in the world does not supersede the power of prayer. And how we are able to go through walls. Glory to his name. We're able to go through mountains. We're able to soar high above the highest mountains. 
right? Through the power of prayer, we're able to do great and mighty things. So yeah, maybe you may not be working right now. Um, <laughs> your, your businesses may be closed or closing, or maybe you're stressed out, you know, because it's tight and you're trying to find a way to make ends meet for you and your employees, you know, uh, and maybe all these things are going on, but I'm going to tell you, don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop praying. Don't you ever lay down your sword and your shield. Okay? Your sword being the word of God and your shield being your faith. Don't you ever lay it down. Right? Keep that in your hand. Keep that close to your heart. Keep that close to your soul. Because this too will pass. This too will pass. I remember um, during uh, September 11th. September 11th. Um, it was it was a devastating time and on that particular day um, I was scheduled to come into the office which was um, right across the street from the World Trade Center and and basically I had to on a daily basis come through the World Trade Center um, to go to work and that morning I was on my way to work and um, the thought came to my mind to go and pick up some paperwork that I need to pick up. And so I called my office and said, hey guys, I'm gonna be in late. Um, Cause I have to run and stop by, you know, this university to pick up something. Mm -hmm. And um, when I, um, when I, <laughs> when I went, you know, and I got to school, uh, when I got to the university, it was like, um, <laughs> it was like I heard somebody listening to, I think it was I Miss in the Morning. And they were listening to Imus in the morning, and I heard Imus say, oh, a plane hit the tower, the Twin Towers. And I thought it was a Imus in the morning joke or maybe um, a comedic skit that I only heard the tail into. So I didn't really pay it any mind. And so I went to talk to one of my professors, and when I went there, uh, he was talking with another professor, and so I was waiting in courtesy I was waiting to speak with him and when I was waiting to speak with him you know I came to after he finished talking I came to him and was talking to him about you know what I need to do he says you didn't hear what happened and I'm like what are you talking about he says an airplane hit the towers the twin towers and I was like what and I came outside and when I came outside that's when I saw because I could see it from from my school and so and and it was something that really shocked me it was something that shocked me and and I'm bringing this up because of the fact that when September 11th happened and all the devastations that was going on everybody was like oh my god what are we going to do you know countless jobs not only in New York but around the country was cut right airlines were shut down you know there was fear and intimidation and trepidation that was going on in the world right and all these things it was a dark period it was a dark period and then there was this hostility about you know get who's ever responsible right but at that point you know most of us didn't know who was responsible and and i'm saying that to say this it was a dark time but yet and still, guess what? We made it through. Yet and still, we made it through. It was a dark time, but we made it through. And I'm going to encourage you this morning to know that you're going to make it through. But you got to make it through with the power of the Holy Spirit and with the strength of our Lord. You got to make it through on your knees. You got to make it through praying and fasting and trusting God that he's going to bring you through. Doesn't matter what goes on in your family. Doesn't matter what challenges you face. You're going to make it through if you make it through with your hands in the master's hands. You're going to get through every challenge that you face, but you got to get through it with the power of God in your life. You're not going to get through it just hoping and a wishing. And you're not going to get through it 
even if this uh, political melee ceased to exist, right? You're not gonna get through it with that because every new person coming in is gonna usher in something else, okay? So you gotta get it through with your trust in God. That's what Isaiah said. He says, some trust in horses and others in chariots. They trust in horses because they're strong and they trust in chariots because they are many. And it talks about woe unto those who go down to Egypt for help. Egypt representing the world. We don't go to the world for help, right? Because we know the world is not our help. Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And so I'm gonna encourage you this morning, right? You're gonna get through this. You're gonna get through this. I know it's been heart-wrenching. I've lost family members. I've lost close, dear friends to COVID-19. I've lost people that I know and people that I'm close to. I've lost a lot of people. And you know, when I look at all of this, I'm like, God, you're still in control. <laughs> you're still in control. And, and it causes me to bless the Lord with all of my soul because of the fact the same God who kept me when I was in the lion's dens, the, the same God who kept me when I was broken and I had no income, the same God who kept me from sickness and disease when I had no insurance, the same God who, when, when I had no insurance and, and I had um, uh, uh, the flu, who allowed me through the power of prayer to recover in two days. Two days, I was made whole. And I had it bad. I mean, I had it bad. And the Lord healed my body. That's the same God I serve today. That's the same God who I give glory and honor and praise today. That's the same God who I magnify and say, God, you're still on the throne. And so I wanna encourage you today. You're gonna to get through this. I know it may not feel that way, but remember, the just shall walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk by our sight to say, um, you know, oh, things look bad, so therefore it must be bad. No, things things are bad. Let's let's get the elephant out of the room, right? Things are bad, but our Lord is good, right? And if you measure it, it's almost like a a scale that is weighed. Put all your bad stuff on the scale, and then put the Lord is good on the other side, and see what drops heavier. The Lord is good and worthy to be praised. And so I want to encourage you today. Continue to worship. Continue to pray. Continue to give God glory, honor, and praise. Continue to study your word. Continue to fast. Right? Even if your church is not fasting, you fast. You get on your face and lay before the Lord and worship his name. Let the tears flow. Okay, don't let your tears be just because you were in a church service and that church service was, was fantastic or on fire. No, let your praise be genuine. Let your worship be genuine where you lay before the presence of God saying, God, here am I to worship. Here am I to bow down. Here am I to say that you are God. Amen? Because God is worthy to be praised. Doesn't matter what you face, he is worthy to be praised and so I am ever so grateful ever so grateful that the Lord is on the throne and we are his children and he watches over us God promises to never leave us or to forsake us but to be with us always even in this day and time he's with you right now He's he hasn't abandoned you but he is with you right here and right now and you can trust and believe that the Lord will make a way for you you can trust and believe that 
You can trust and believe that God will never fail you. He'll never fail you. Just trust him. He'll never fail you. Trust him. Just trust and believe that the Lord is there for you. And he promises to keep you in all of your ways. Right? He said, he'll keep you in all your ways lest you dash your foot against a stone. So just trust him. God is on your side. I love you. I love you with the love of Christ. Have a blessed and marvelous day. Um, if there's anything we could do to help you, if there's anything that I could do to pray for you, um, because my father is on the throne. So if I could pray for you, then I'll gladly do that. Just send me a message. Um, and don't, don't let your messages be foolish things, right? You know, this is not about uh, friendship. This is not about... Um, uh, even those those of you who or I've experienced people that you open the opportunity for people to reach out and they want to reach out for a relationship. No, I'm, I'm, I'm really talking to you. If you're going through something and you need to be prayed for, um, just list it. And I'm going to lift you up in prayer and I'm going to have my church lift you up in prayer as well. And so we love you all with the love of Christ. Have a blessed and marvelous day. Um, but do it all for Christ. Do it all for Christ, not for people, for Christ. God bless you. Have a blessed day. God bless.